Welcome to our third discussion of electron configurations here in our unit on electrons. Here we're going to deal with expanded configurations. So once again we see carbon, and here's carbon's expanded electron configuration. Let's go in and take a look and see how this differs from the configurations that we've talked about up to this point in time. In an expanded electron configuration, we want to represent every principal energy level in the atom, along with the sublevels of those principal energy levels and the number of electrons in each of those sublevels. So as to avoid confusing the sublevels with the principal energy levels, we give them letters instead of numbers. There are four different sublevels that a principal energy level can have. They're called S, P, D, and F. This has to do with the kinds of lines that they produce on spectrum. You don't really need to worry about that. But what you should understand is that each sublevel can only fit a specific number of electrons. The S sublevel can fit two electrons, the P sublevel can fit six, the D sublevel fits 10, and the F sublevel fits 14. The way this works with principal energy levels is shown on this chart. What we'll see here is the principal energy level, the sublevel or sublevels that that principal energy level has, and the number of electrons that can fit in each of those sublevels. Principal energy level 1 just has an S sublevel, and so that can fit only a total of two electrons, which of course we learned when we learned about basic electron configurations. Principal energy level 2 has an S sublevel and a P sublevel, and so it can fit two electrons in the S and six in the P for a total of eight. Principal energy level 3 has an S, a P, and a D, and so it can fit 2 in the S, 6 in the P, and 10 in the D for a total of 18. And principal energy level number 4 has an S, a P, a D, and an F, fitting a total of 2 in the S, 6 in the P, 10 in the D, and 14 in the F for a total of 32 electrons. 5, 6, and 7 all theoretically have S, P, D, and F sublevels as well. The elements on the periodic table do use the 5F sublevel, but after that we start to contract because we just run out of elements. A version of this chart is on page 12 in your Unit 5 packet in case you ever forget it, but you can see that there is a pattern at work in our sublevels. When we write an expanded electron configuration, we're always going to use this format. We're going to have a number to represent the principal energy level and then the sublevel letter, or the subletter. And then as a superscript, we're going to put the number of electrons that occupy that sublevel. Graphically, it can be represented like this. So if we consider hydrogen's one electron, that's in the first principal energy level, and it's S sublevel. And so what we would write is one S, and then one to demonstrate that there's one electron in that sublevel. This is actually going to be done for every sublevel in the atom. Does that make sense? It's probably best to look at some examples to get a handle on how this works. Let's do the expanded electron configurations for nitrogen, sodium, and argon. If you want, pause the video and try to do it on your own, and then when you're ready, we can go through it together. So nitrogen has a basic electron configuration of 2-5, and so if we wanna write this out expanded, it would be 1s2, that's the two in the basic configuration, then 2s2, 2p3. Those five electrons in the second principal energy level are going to fill the S sublevel first. The S sublevel can fit a total of two of them, and then the remaining three will go into the P sublevel. Sodium's basic electron configuration is 2 8 1, and so its expanded configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Again, the first two electrons in that first principal energy level go into principal energy level 1's S sublevel, 1s2. We have eight total electrons in our second principal energy level. The first two are going to go into the 2s sublevel, and the next six are going to go into the 2p sublevel. The second principal energy level is now entirely filled, and so our remaining electron is going to go into the 3s sublevel. There's going to be one there, so it's going to wind up being 3s1. Argon is 2-8-8, and so its expanded configuration looks like 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. I hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and then let's move on. It would be great if that's how filling stayed, if we just filled in order, but the basic rule for filling is that electrons are always going to go into the lowest energy sublevel possible. If it just stayed that way, it would probably be pretty easy to get our head around expanded electron configurations, but unfortunately there are a couple of quirks. The major one is that the basic rule for filling is that electrons will always go in the lowest energy sublevel possible if we're talking about the ground state, which of course we usually are. The only quirk is that some lower principal energy level sublevels actually occupy a higher energy than other sublevels of higher principal energy levels. We see this beginning with principal energy level three. If you look at the 3D sublevel, you can see that it actually occupies a higher energy than the 4S sublevel. This means that we would actually fill our electrons into the 4S sublevel first before we fill the 3D sublevel. Then we would go through and fill 4P. 
You can see that this trend continues as we move into higher principal energy levels. So for instance, 4F actually occupies a higher energy than 5S, 5P, and 6S, which means that they would all get filled first before we started putting electrons into that 4F sublevel. Believe me, I know that this is confusing. Let me apologize to you on behalf of all chemists everywhere throughout history, but I promise you that this is the easiest possible way that anyone has ever thought of to explain this. If we thought of a more easy way, we would explain it to you that way. Unfortunately, science is what science is. At the same time, there is a trick that you can use to help you remember your filling order. It was developed by the Germans who kind of came up with it. It's called the Aufbau. And what you do is you draw a diagram like this. So you're going to line up all of your sublevels in the same column. So you can see 1s, 2s, 3s, and 2p, 3p, 4p, and so on. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw arrows through it in sequence, which tell you the filling order. So first you're going to start with 1s, and then you're going to do 2s, and then 2p, and then 3s and then 3P and then 4S and 3D and 4P and 5S and so on and so forth and so on. You could of course just memorize this too, but I think it's a waste of time. Hopefully that makes this not so tough. If you have any questions about this, now would be a great time to write them down before we move on. What's interesting is that the periodic table turns out to be arranged in filling order. And so different regions of the periodic table can actually be referred to by the sublevels into which electrons get placed as we add them in. So groups one and two are actually known as the S block and groups 13 through 18 are known as the P block. Groups three through 12 are known as the D block and the two groups at the bottom are known as the F block. This is because electrons are getting placed into those sublevels in those regions of the periodic table. And of course it goes in sequence. So the extra electron goes into 2s1 in lithium and then goes into 2s2 in beryllium and so on as we move through period two or period three or any of the periods. Another trick that I, we can talk about here at the end is using the periodic table to maximize laziness. So a shorthand that's often used for elements is to take the group 18 element, what's called the noble gas that comes before that element, and use that as a shorthand when writing a particular element's electron configuration. For instance, this is the electron configuration for barium. It is in group two, it is not in group 18. The group 18 element that comes before barium on the periodic table is xenon. Here's xenon's electron configuration. Notice that xenon and barium have almost everything in common. So if we want to write barium's electron configuration using the shorthand, we can simply write barium by taking xenon, putting it in parentheses to indicate that they have the same electron configuration up to that point, and then writing the additional electrons that barium has afterwards, in this case just 6s2. That makes life a little bit easier too. So between the Aufbau and using the noble gas shorthand for writing electron configurations, it shouldn't be as tough as it maybe seemed at the beginning. Another question that you might have is why do we care about sublevels? Well, aside from the weird energy thing, you should remember that electrons don't orbit the nucleus. They're located in regions of probability, which are called orbitals. And the different orbitals of different sublevels have different shapes different three-dimensional shapes. I'm gonna show you some of the orbitals now so you can kind of see what they look like. You don't need to have this information committed to memory even at the level of introductory college chemistry. This would really be advanced chemistry, but I think they look cool so I figured I'd show them to you. What you see here are the S, P, D, and F sublevels at the point at which they enter into the periodic table. So you see 1S, 2P, 3D, and 4F. In each of these pictures, one electron would fit in the red area and one electron would fit in the blue area. That would be the places where we would most likely expect to find those particular electrons in those particular orbitals. In order to start to get a handle on this, you can start to understand why sublevel expanded notation is necessary. We're going to expand on this concept in our next discussion as well when we start to talk about box notation. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can diagram an atom's electron configuration in expanded form. If I give you an atom off the periodic table, you should be able to figure out its electron configuration and represent it as an expanded configuration. Also make sure that you can use an atom's expanded electron configuration to figure out how many electrons occupy each principal energy level and sublevel of the atom. Can you take an expanded configuration and convert it back into a basic configuration in other words? Finally, make sure that you can identify valid and invalid expanded electron configurations. If somebody starts talking to you about 2p8, for instance, you should know enough to know that that is not something that we would ever see in any electron configuration on the periodic table. If you can do that, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.